This video is strictly for educational and awareness purposes only. No hacking, no illegal activity, just a look at what's out there so you can protect yourself. Picture this, it's 2 a.m., the world is quiet, and I'm deep diving into GitHub. I stumble onto a corner dedicated to phone number research tools, open source, built by security folks, hiding in plain sight. These tools reveal just how much of our phone data is public. Carrier info, region hints, even rough location cues. They scan public sources and piece together a digital puzzle from the footprints we leave behind. It's fascinating and a little unsettling. Here are the most interesting projects I found, so you know what's possible and why it matters. The first project that stood out was Phone Infoga. It's a powerful OSINT tool for scanning international phone numbers using only public data. Think of it as a search engine for phone numbers, checking websites, social media, and more. You can run it on your own number to see what's out there, country, carrier, line type. It's a wake-up call for anyone who thinks their number is just a string of digits. The real power? Automation. It checks dozens of sources in seconds, something you'd never do manually. It can even flag if your number appears in data breaches. This is invaluable for personal security, knowing your own digital footprint. But here's the catch. In the wrong hands, it's a reconnaissance tool. The ethics depend entirely on the user. Developers intend it for security research, but misuse is always a risk. Phone Infoga shows the double-edged sword of OSINT. Great for defense, dangerous for privacy. When you share your number, you're sharing a key to a lot of public info. So, serious warning, this is for awareness only. Don't use it to invade privacy or track others. The point is to understand these capabilities exist so you can protect your own data. Knowledge is your first line of defense. Next up, a smaller tool, Phone Tracer OSINT. If Phone Infoga is a Swiss army knife, this is a precision screwdriver. It focuses on extracting basic details from a phone number, country, carrier, and sometimes a rough location. No hacking, just parsing the number's structure and cross-referencing public databases. Geolocation here means hints, not GPS, maybe a city or state based on area code. It's lightweight, just a script, but surprisingly powerful. Tools like this democratize data analysis. What once took agencies now takes a few lines of Python. But with that power comes risk. It's easy to misuse. Attackers could use it to profile numbers for targeted phishing, knowing the carrier makes fake messages more convincing. Security isn't always about hacking. Sometimes it's about connecting public dots. Phone Tracer OSINT makes that easy. So the warning, this is for awareness. Misusing it to profile or target people is harmful and may be illegal. Know these methods exist so you can spot suspicious messages and protect your data. Even simple tools can be leveraged for social engineering. Stay skeptical of unsolicited messages. Awareness is your best defense. Then I found Ghost Track, a full OSINT dashboard, not just for phone numbers. It combines phone analysis, IP lookups, and username correlation in one user-friendly interface. You can start with a phone number, find a linked social account, grab the username, and check that username across hundreds of sites. It's automation for what we've all done manually, searching for someone's online presence. The real power is in chaining data, phone to username to IP to more accounts. This is the heart of advanced OSINT, connecting digital footprints to build a bigger picture. GhostTrack packages all this into a single tool for researchers, but the risk is obvious. It can be used for stalking or harassment. The name says it all. Tracking people is a real danger. So the warning, Never use tools like this to follow or target individuals. Understand these techniques so you can protect your own privacy. Don't reuse usernames everywhere, and be careful linking your phone number to public profiles. The more you know, the safer you are. Ghost Track is a lesson in how easily public data can be connected. Use that knowledge to protect yourself. Awareness, not surveillance, is the goal. Next, I found Geophone, a tool that visualizes phone numbers on a world map. Instead of lists, it shows where numbers are registered, using country and area codes. It's not GPS tracking, just a rough map based on public data. For researchers, it's a game changer. Plot thousands of numbers and instantly spot regional hotspots like spam clusters. Visualization reveals patterns you'd miss in spreadsheets. Seeing clusters on a map tells a story at a glance. 
Geophone is simple, using mapping libraries and public prefix databases. It turns abstract data into a geographic narrative, but the visual aspect makes misuse feel more personal, even if it's not precise. Placing someone on a map, even approximately, can be unsettling. So the warning, this is for research and education only, don't use it for tracking or stalking. The map shows where a number is registered, not where someone is right now. Understand the limits and the risks of visualizing public data. Use it to see patterns, not to invade privacy. Then there are the micro tools, Phonosynth, Phonosynth, and others. These are tiny scripts focused on one thing, validating a phone number's format, checking if the prefix exists, or identifying the original carrier. Some even estimate the likely time zone based on area code. Each piece seems minor, but together, they build a soft profile, valid number, country, carrier, time zone. For researchers, this is useful for understanding telecom data. For attackers, it's another puzzle piece for targeting. These tools show how much info is hidden in a phone number's structure. They're educational, meant to dissect and explain, not to profile people. But the ethical line is thin, learning can become surveillance. So the warning, use these for research and learning only. Profiling people without consent is unethical and may be illegal. Understand what's possible and use that knowledge to protect your own data. Small details add up, be mindful of what you share. Education, not exploitation, is the purpose. Another project, PyTrack, is all about collecting public traces linked to a phone number. It automates searches across platforms where numbers are often posted, like online marketplaces or social media recovery pages. Even deleted listings can leave cache traces online. PyTrack checks these public breadcrumbs, sometimes revealing account associations through password reset pages. It's clever OSINT, using public features in unexpected ways. No hacking, just observation. Tools like this are valuable for security audits, seeing what info is exposed about your own number. But outside of consented, legal contexts, it's invasive. Mapping someone's digital life from their number is a privacy violation. So the warning, use PyTrack only with permission, on your own data or in authorized security work. Anything else crosses ethical and legal lines. It's a tool for self-discovery, not for snooping. Know what's out there about you, but respect others' privacy. Responsible use is everything. Finally, I found the aggregators, frameworks like Collector. These aren't single tools, but collections of modules for phone-related OSINT. They pull data from everywhere, breaches, paste sites, search engines, and more. The result? A comprehensive report of a number's public footprints. It's the ultimate awareness dossier. Carrier, country, social accounts, leaks, and more. The risk isn't any one detail, but the aggregation, small pieces become a detailed profile. Security pros use these to spot vulnerabilities and defend organizations. But aggregating data on others without consent is a serious ethical breach. These frameworks show how easily public data can be compiled. The warning, don't use them to build dossiers on people. They exist to help you see your own exposure, not to invade privacy. Aggregation is powerful. Use it to protect, not to harm. Know what's possible and guard your own data accordingly. After hours of exploring, I realized phone numbers are more discoverable than we think. Our data doesn't need to be hacked, it's often left out in the open. Be deliberate about what you share and tighten your privacy settings. Treat your phone number like a key, don't post it publicly. The more you understand about data connections, the better you can protect your digital identity. If this made you think twice before sharing your number, that's the goal. It's not about the tools, but the bigger picture of digital privacy. Want more tips on protecting your phone privacy? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there. Knowledge is your best defense.